Good afternoon, and um, thank you for joining us today for another update on the wildfire situation in the NWT. My name is Agata Gudkowska, and I work with Cabinet Communications for the GNWT, and I will be moder moderating today's press conference. Before we get started, once again, please keep your cameras off, and if you are not on our panel, please mute your microphones until it, it is your turn uh, to ask a question. And I know I, I can hear some noise here from a couple of you. You're not muted. Please mute yourselves. So today we will start with remarks from Shane Thompson, Minister of Environment and Climate Change and Municipal and Community Affairs. Then we will receive a fire update from Mike Westwick, Information Officer for ECC. This will be followed by remarks from Mayor Alti, and she will then ask Chris Greencorn, the Director of Public Works and Engineering for the City, to provide a city update. After Chris's update, we will move to the media QA portion where reporters will be able to ask questions. Today, we have more reporters than ever before. So I'm going to run this, um, this media briefing a little bit differently. Today, priority will be given to Northern Outlets. Northern Outlets, you guys are on the ground. You're relaying information to residents and it's really important that you guys get your questions in. So you will, um, you will have priority um, yeah, and I will start that you guys get your questions in. So sorry guys, please mute your microphones because I hear an echo and we're all trying to get through this, get the information. Okay, um, so with Northern Outlets, we have on call Lucky Launt, Cabin Radio, Inuvik Drum and APTN. Is there anybody that I'm missing here? from Northern NWT outlets. Lucky Lonk, Cabin Radio, Inuvik Drum, APTN. I see a hand up. Agatha, it's Ollie from Cabin Radio. CBC North is in the process of joining Lini Lambert. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Ollie. Radio, Claudian, your hand is up. Perfect, thank you. Alrighty, and Nelly, I mentioned Lucky Lawn. Okay, so after we do Northern Outlets, I will turn it to Southern Media Outlets. I've randomized the order. You guys will get one question each, and unfortunately, we may not get to all of you. And I am asking media not to raise your hands. Like, if I get to you, I get to you. This conference needs to end at eight o'clock, as you can imagine. The panelists are, are really busy. This is a busy time for everybody. So we do need to finish at eight o'clock today. So on the panel today, and I'm gonna paste this into our chat here so that you have the names of the panelists as well as their titles. Okay, so I just pasted that in here. So on the panel today, we have Minister Shane Thompson, ECC MACA, Mike Westwick, Wildfire Information Officer, ECC, Jennifer Young, Emergency Management Organization, Information Officer, Ian Legary, e EMO Operations, Lori Fife, EMO Logistical Planning, Kimberly Riles, CEO of NTHSSA, Dr. Claudia Kraft, Territorial Medical Director, Jeffrey Edison, Acting ADM for Regional Operations at the Department of Infrastructure, William McKay, Deputy Minister of Finance, and we also have Minister Caroline Wozniak on the line as well. Um, Imran Khan, CFO of Northwest Tel, Corey Strang, CEO and President of NTPC, City of Yellowknife Representatives. Um, we have Chris Greencorn, Director of Public Works and Engineering, and we have Mayor Rebecca Alti as well. So again, you'll find the list of panelists um, pasted to the chat there with their titles. So with that, I'll turn it over to Minister Thompson for opening remarks. Thank you. Go ahead, Minister. Yep, thank you. I just had to hit the mute button there. Uh, good evening, everyone, uh, and thank you for joining us tonight. First off, on behalf of the Premier, uh, she passes on her regrets, but she's uh, at the registration facility helping people out there. The wildfire situation remains critical in the Northwest Territories, with fire threats and threatening communities in multiple regions. Real concerns remain in Yellow Life, Detta, Delo, and Ingham Trail, Hay River, Fort Smith, Jean Marie, Anubic, and now Kakisa. 
<clears throat> where fires are burning close by. Crews are working tirelessly to protect structures and other values at risk in three in these communities. Please know people are doing their, everything they can to protect what we value most. An evacuation order was also issued for the community of Kikisa today because of new threats there. Your friends in Fort Providence are ready to support you during this difficult time. I urge all residents under the evacuation orders to please adhere to them as they are issued. These orders are never issued lightly and always consider our collective health and safety. You could be jeopardizing your safety than that of others by staying behind. It is not safe to stay in communities where evacuation or orders have been issued. I want to send a heartfelt thanks to all our fire crews, members of our emergency management organization, and everyone who is working to protect our communities and support evacuees. With assistance from multiple GNWT departments and community governments, Joint Task Force North, the RCMP, Public Safety Canada, the Coast Guard, and private sectors, we will continue to support the safe evacuation of residents. Please continue to listen to your community government and follow the GNWT public safety page for the latest information. I understand that this is a very stressful time for residents and loved ones. A lot has changed in the past few days, but we will take every precaution to ensure our residents safely are safe. Again, please take this time to check in on friends and families and please remember, remain calm. We all get through this together. I have, up the, have the utmost confidence on our emergency management organization and lean on them heavily during these challenging times. They are on the front line and they will always prioritize our collective health and safety. Thank you and stay safe. At this point in time, I'd like to turn the, floor, the mic over to Mike Westwood. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like I'd like to start by first offering our our thoughts and our support to the folks who have uh, just uh, who are now subject to an evacuation order in Kikiza. This is yet a, yet another example of the kind of severe fire fire season that we're facing this year and the extraordinary human toll it's taking. Uh, our team is on the ground uh, supporting, uh, and uh, we're we're continuing to work to suppress that fire, which is now both affecting uh, both Kikiza and Hay River. Uh, moving ahead to Yellowknife and the surrounding areas, on the Beshakon Yellowknife Fire ZF-15 today, uh, we were once again able to fly. Uh, this was good news. Uh, we've had air tankers, uh, several air, air tankers on that fire hitting targets to the east of the of the fire, on, to, on the east side of the fire there, uh, all day. Uh, and they've been successful in completing drops and uh, doing their part to limit the spread there. Also of note uh, was that the we man that uh, we managed to not have the highway be impacted as folks make their way to safety uh, from our capital city here. That's also good news. Some additional work today on that fire. We began laying down fire retardant uh, to bolster our control lines to the west of the city of Yellowknife. This is one piece of the overall protection plan that we're working shoulder to shoulder with our with our partners in the city of Yellowknife to prepare for the event that this fire does approach the community. The control line offers a number of tactical uh, a number of tactical advantages. Uh, you know, it gives an important place for crews to do good work, and it is a place where we may consider. Uh, where we may consider ignition operations, uh, meeting that heading off that fire uh, that's coming, that's uh, moving towards Yellowknife. Now, in terms of in terms of uh, how much the fire has grown today, uh, we're doing some assessments on that right now as the peak burning day comes to a close. But it is expected to have moved slightly towards Yellowknife. Uh, we saw north winds on that fire, which was trending those that south. Now those north winds were important for another fire uh, causing threat to our area. Uh, ZF-011, uh, the Ingram Trail fire. Um, we were once again able to get aircraft up there. We had heavy helicopters uh, working in the area as well as air tankers to cool off that south end and uh, slow the growth there. Um, 
and that builds upon successful ignition operations that uh, that we completed yesterday. Uh, they, these were small scale and were designed to head off some growth uh, and slow the growth to the south. Um, and uh, similar to similar to the Bestercol Yellowknife fire, uh, we are completing assessments, but that fire is expected to have grown to the south. It has not reached the Ingram Trail. I uh, just want to be clear about that. Um, now, in terms of both of these fires, there is risk that they reach their respective landmarks uh, during the weekend here. Um, we did receive some rain. Uh, we did receive a very small amount of rain, I should say. Um, you know, uh, it's reading less than a millimeter uh, in the area of the Beshakon Yellowknife fire, uh, which we'd certainly like to see more of, uh, and uh, slightly more uh, in ZF at ZF11, the Ingram Trail fires. Uh, again, um, again, the presence of rain is no silver bullet. We're still facing a very serious situation, but any amount of moisture in the air is helpful. We're heading into a critical couple of days in this during the management of this wildfire. We expect to see northwest winds to nor to west northwest winds over the next two days, uh, and that those are winds that will trend both of those fires in directions that we don't want. Our teams are working very hard on the ground to slow the growth as we have for well over a month on these fires, um, and uh, we will continue that work tomorrow. We also continue to work closely with the city of Yellowknife on an extensive network of sprinkler lines, heavy water systems, and, uh, and fuel breaks uh, to protect strategic areas of the city. And, uh, and the Canadian Armed Forces are playing an important role in the fire smarting work going on there. That concludes my updates for today. Thank you, Mike. I'll pass it along now to the mayor. Mayor Alti, go ahead. Thank you. I know uh, it's been another difficult day and we have a number of, of days ahead and a number of days that we've just gone through. And so first off, I'd like to again, thank the crews who have continued to work hard fighting the fires, both on the ground and in the air. All of the crews who have helped residents evacuate all of the municipalities in Alberta, in Alberta who have uh, set up evacuation centers and businesses and residents along the route and in those new evacuation centers who have helped residents during this difficult time. To residents who have evacuated, thank you. I, I know the journey was difficult um, and um, can hope that you've got friends, family and support right now during this tough time. For those who haven't evacuated yet, please do so now. The highway is open, but it's subject to change at any time. We want to ensure everybody's safety. And with the fire approaching, it's not only the fire, but it's the heavy smoke that will be approaching. So we do encourage crew, every all residents to uh, evacuate as soon as they can. Again, to essential workers who continue to remain in Yellowknife, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a difficult time, and uh, you're doing an incredible amount of work to, to protect our community. With that, I'd like to pass it over to Chris Greencorn, who will give an update on uh, work to date. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Alti. Uh, the mitigation work uh, completed by Yellowknife Municipal and contracted professional forces has been twofold. I'm going to display that on my screen uh, for visual purposes so that Yellowknifers can uh, get a glimpse on how we're defending home. Uh, again, it's twofold. The first was the deployment of heavy equipment to construct physical fire breaks of 100 meters wide. This work has been, been extensive and you can see it on screen under the yellow hatched areas. Uh, again, they're 100 meters wide uh, with about 15,000 meters of length, distributing this uh, work over 15, uh, 150 hectares in the Grace Lake, uh, south, southwest and the, the northwest portion of Angle Business District. Um, the second front is water distribution, sprinkler and water cannon deployment. These are in the other colors that you see in blue. Um, so far, we're deploying about 20,000 meters of pipe of various sizes, 50 plus pumps of various, uh, also various sizes and uh, capabilities. This is all in all providing somewhere between 500 and 1,000 gallons per minute uh, from local water sources. 
All in all, it's likely the largest overland water distribution project Yellowknife has ever seen. And this is our main line of defense. As Mike indicated earlier, all in all, I would say the city has, uh, according to ECC friends, uh, four guards of defense established uh, before fire reaches Yellowknife. I'd be remiss if I also didn't take the opportunity to thank the hardworking uh, colleagues and contracted partners, as well as support staff who are establishing lines uh, in defense of our community. They're not always ones to seek praise, but they deserve every bit of it and so much more. So thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we will uh, we'll be ready. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chris, and thank you, speakers. So we'll now move on to the question period, uh, again, beginning with Northern Media. I remind you, please mute your mics until you are called upon, and please make sure you mute yourself again after you have asked your question, and keep your cameras off unless you're on the panel. Um, so let's start today with Lucky Lon, Nelly. Nelly, are you there? Okay, we'll come back to you. Um, Ollie Williams, Cabin Radio. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Aggie. Uh, can uh, anyone on the panel please tell us how many flights left today, uh, both scheduled and evacuation, and how many flights are anticipated tomorrow and Saturday, please? Thanks, Ollie. Je Jennifer, I'll throw this one to you. Hello, yes, good evening. Um, we took um, 10 planes uh, out today um, with approximately 1,500 people that went out. We're unclear about the schedule of flights. We're only tracking the flights that we have uh, coordinated through the emergency management operation. And tomorrow we have about 22 planes scheduled to go out. Thank you. Ali, do you have a follow up? Yeah, I, I did see earlier, I think, a note that said flights might run into Saturday as well. Can you just confirm that the plan is to keep flights going out on Saturday? And can you tell us a little bit about what gives you confidence that flights can safely operate into Saturday? Go ahead, Jennifer. Uh, flights, um, we we will be continuing them on tomorrow, depending on whether or not we're able to actually um, move more flights beyond the 22 currently scheduled it will depend on many factors, including uh, weather and crew time and the number of assets we're able to access. Uh, however, so with that in mind, we will potentially go into Saturday, but that is not yet confirmed. And for um, answers related to safety of um, the flights, I'll turn it over to, to Rick, please. Yeah. Good day, uh, Chief Warrant Officer uh, Richard Snagar. Uh, for tomorrow, the flights, like we were saying, it's uh, going to be two, 22 flights up to now for schedule. Uh, also, tomorrow we'll have the uh, military assets that will be joining to that scheduling. So it will be more than 22. I cannot give you the precise number, but we will be keep going until that uh, we can go. And also for Saturday, if we can keep going, we will be keep going as well for Saturday. The scheduling will be getting done during the day tomorrow for the Saturday portion. Thank you very much. All right, moving on now to Inuvik Drum, Eric Bowling. Hi, Eric. Hello, just want to confirm, can you hear me? Yep. Excellent. So I'm wondering uh, roughly, is there any estimate on how many people have left Yellowknife so far and how many people remain? Jennifer, you folks can take this one. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, we know that on the flights, we there's about 1,500 that uh, went went out on the planes. Um, and um, I don't know. I don't know that we have counts on uh, how many beyond the planes have gone out yet. But um, and we don't know how many is left in town. But we can talk about uh, how many we have registered so far. I'll turn it over to Ian Legary to speak to the details, please. We have uh, registration numbers coming in from um, a whole variety of Alberta shelters. Uh, those will be available tomorrow. Um, we have registered on our portal um, over 2,000 evacuees. Not uh, clear whether those are highway or air. Uh, those that data is just being distilled now. Um, we have evacuation centers in three primary Alberta communities for those from the South Slave and, of course, Calgary 
for the area evacuees from Yellowknife, but there are also uh, smaller centers all across the province and uh, Alberta is uh, managing those numbers for us. So we'll have better data tomorrow. Thanks very much. Eric, do you have a follow-up? I do. Uh, so there was an announcement. This is probably for Mike. Uh, I'll let you know here, this one. Do the announcements that you're extending the, the flights out of Yellow Knight into Saturday, I mean, that would imply that there's going to be still people in Yellow Knight on Saturday. So does that mean that the deadline is being sort of pushed forward? Or are people who are able to be out of Yellow Knight beforehand still being expected to be out by noon tomorrow? Jennifer, I'll throw this one to you guys again. Uh, yes, the order is for, for tomorrow or Friday at noon, I believe, if I recall correctly. Um, the uh, intention, obviously, is to get as many people out as quickly as we possibly can, and we're using all of the tools and resources at our hands to be able to do that. Um, where people are able to travel out on their own, they're encouraged to do so and to carpool where possible. Um, and uh, and if needed, obviously, you know, we're going to keep going until we have uh, the population of Yellowknife and uh, Delo and Detta and Ingram Trail um, out um, due to the evacuation order as quickly as we can. Thank you. All right, moving along to Carly at APTN. Hi, Carly. Carly, are you there? Okay, we'll get back to you. Um, all right, Lini at CBC North. Are you there? Yes, I am yes. here. Okay, go um, ahead. How many, people, how many people will be able to get on those 22 planes scheduled tomorrow? Jennifer? Uh, we believe about 1,800 people should be able to get out on the flights tomorrow. We need do you have a follow-up? Yeah, can you tell me, um, like, 1,800 people, what kind of impact, what kind of dent does that make in the number of people who actually need to still leave? Go ahead, Jennifer. Okay, I'm going to pass for the details of that uh, question. I'm going to pass it to Ian and Gary, please. We're anticipating about 5,000 people need to leave by air. Um, in accounting today and tomorrow, that will get us close to the 4,000 amount. But as uh, Rick mentioned, military assets have not been taken into account with those numbers yet, and those will be ramping up in a big way tomorrow. So I think we'll be well on our way to achieving our, our, our estimated target of 5,000. Hey, thank you. Claudiana, Radio Canada. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Excellent. Yep. Uh, so just uh, wanting to know who uh, are the essential workers staying in town during the evacuation and approximately how many people that might be? Sure. I'm going to throw this one to Minister Wozniak. Minister Wozniak, you're on the call, correct? Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, so we do have a list of essential workers that we've prepared. I don't have those lists here, certainly could get them for you. But I think really the question is ensuring that we do have the adequate number of workers available to do what is required of them. Um, and right now that is, you know, at this point, it's not come and particularly, I want to just actually take this opportunity to say thank you to the military. They are filling some significant gaps and filling in and providing significant supports to us. Um, and you can see them really, you know, you can see them here at the table right beside us hand in hand. So, um, you know, there are a number of essential workers and a big shout out to them. Um, and they all are speaking to their supervisors and managers about when they will be required potentially to have to to leave and um, we'll be making sure that they are you know, you know, informed about when those times come when they have to be on their way out as well. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And Radio Canada, do you have a follow-up? Uh, en français, si possible, de me donner le nombre de vols, de vols de militaires, combien on anticipe de passagers, de gens qui seront évacués demain et au cours des prochains jours, s'il vous plaît? 
Jennifer, I'm throwing this one to your team because I know there's a French speaker there. Thank you. Uh, bonjour, c'est uh, l'adjudant chef des chars francs Pour côté vol militaire, en ce moment, on va travailler pour uh, la cédule uh, parce que nos, uh, nos, uh, nos avions vont arriver uh, demain matin et de, durant le courant de l'après-midi. Donc, pour le moment, je ne peux pas vous donner un nombre exact. Par contre, uh, on a des équipes uh, pour uh, chaque avion uh, augmenté pour pouvoir uh, faire un, un vol continu pour sortir le monde le plus possible avec nos avions en aide avec le côté uh, civil de notre uh, cellule. Thank you very much. And for the last speaker, can we get someone in that boardroom to type your name and title, just so the reporter has that on hand? Thank you. All right, so I'm going to... Oops, sorry about that. I'm going to go back up the list to Lucky Long. Lucky Long, are you on the call and do you have a question? Yeah, do you hear me? Yes. So I would like to know what kind of action will be taken uh, if people are not leaving uh, after the deadline given by the city. Sure. Um, J Jennifer, I'll bring this one to you. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, we our, our goal obviously is to encourage everybody to um, follow the evacuation order and to um, evacuate out of the city at the earliest possibility. Thank you. Do you have a follow up, Nelly? Yeah, I would like to know if the Yukon Territory is an option to open, open more uh, evacuation center in case uh, the one in Alberta are full. Sure. Jennifer's team? The answer to that question, I'm going to pass that on to Ian Legary, please. We have uh, set up arrangements, obviously, with Alberta, uh, up to a maximum of 5,000 in Calgary and uh, all of the other smaller centers for our South Slave evacuees. Um, Manitoba is our next step. They can take up to 3,000 evacuees. And uh, so that is uh, where we've processed. We just, uh, just got off a call with all of the jurisdictions earlier today and they're, that's the, the two best for capacity. The other jurisdictions are working with other limitations. Thank you. All right, APTN, Carly, are you on the are you on the line? Carly at APTN? No. Okay, so um, that's it for Northern Media right now. So we're gonna move along. Um, I have a random list here um that 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 i've randomized so i'm just going to go over it so first up here is jacques at cbc news edmonton jacques do you have a question okay carrie tate at globe and mail do you have a question? Have a question? Yes, thanks for taking my question. I'm wondering if you underestimated the number of flights, how much demand there would be for flights, or if it just that you were not able to get as many on the ground on the first day. Thanks for your question. <clears throat> Jennifer, I'm going to throw this one to you guys. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, we had some delays leaving uh, Yellowknife today due to weather, so we didn't get to an early morning start as we had anticipated, so we weren't able to start until 11 a.m., so that caused um, some difficulty in being able to release as many planes today as we would have uh, anticipated originally. Okay, thank you. All right, Jessica Murphy at BBC News. Okay, Ishmael Shaquille at Reuters. Robert at CTV Edmonton. Okay, Bill or and slash or Candy from CTV National. Colette, Canadian Press. Lauren Black Press. Hi, yes. Um, thanks for taking my question. I was just wondering, there was an announcement that a flight was leaving Hay River and it was posted by Northwest Territories Fire at 5 p.m. today. 
when did that flight leave and how many people are still estimated to be in Hay River? Jenna, first team, can you guys speak to that? Uh, for details to that question, I'll pass it on to Ian and Gary, please. We can't speak to the flight because we didn't arrange one, uh, but we believe there are still several hundred people left in Hay River. Do you have a follow up? That? Yes, sorry, one no. second. What happens if officials are unable to get everyone out of the city by Saturday? Okay. Jennifer's team. Um, as I had uh, answered to a previous question, we are encouraging everyone in Yellowknife to uh, and and uh, Dilo and Geta and the Ingram Trail uh, to leave at the earliest possibility um, and to take the various options provided to them, be it through uh, on the road, driving out, carpooling, or the flight options that we are providing as well to uh, evacuate out of Yellowknife. Thank you. All right, moving along to Arman at CBC Radio, The Current. Leo Ramirez at AFP TV, AFP TV. Leila Kadir, 980 CKNW. Manessa Danabalan, CHCH News. Derek at Bloomberg. Noah Richardson, CPAC. Okay. Um, Agence France Press, Matthew. Paul, Wall Street Journal. John Cole, Media Q. Is there anyone from, so we still have a long list of Southern media, so I just don't want to waste everybody's time with the silence. Is there any Southern media that have not asked a question yet um, that would like to ask a question? And I'm just going to look I, at hands so you can raise your hand here. I would have a question uh, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. Um, my question is for uh, Mike Westwick. Um, I just wanted to for you to. Oh no, sorry. It would be uh, Chris uh, Greencorn. It was about um, the details you gave about the 50 plus pumps and the uh, 500 to 1,000 gallons per minute of water. If you could just like repeat that part um, of what was done around Yellowknife to protect it. Sure. I should Go clarify. Ahead, Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I should clarify that these are the fronts we're working on. Uh, it's not all completely deployed yet, but those are the numbers that we're putting in place. Uh, so far, those are the numbers that uh, that we've gathered for the stuff that's uh, on the ground and in place. So again, that's it's going to be about two, 20,000 meters or 20 kilometers of pipe, uh, 50 plus pumps of various sizes and providing somewhere around 1,000 gallons a minute, both on the Grace Lake front as well as the Ingle Business District. Okay, thank you. We have another hand up here from Audrey at CBC. Audrey, go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question. If an answer is possible in French uh, as well, that would be greatly appreciated. Do you keep track of how many people have left Yellowknife by their own means by land in their car? And if so, how many do you estimate have done so? Sure, Jennifer, I'll throw this one to you guys. Thank you, I'm for, uh, I'll let Rick answer that, please. Uh, encore, uh, bonjour, uh, Richard Francaire. Uh, les numéros en ce moment, on les a pas de complets parce que les, uh, les, les vrais chiffres sont pas encore rentrés. Et de plus, uh, pour dans le sud, où ce que les gens ont été uh, dissipés dans les centres, uh, les chiffres ont pas encore rentré non plus. Donc, en espérant qu'on va pouvoir vous donner une réponse dans le futur. Thank you. All right, Paige Parsons. Do you have a question? No, your hand was up. 
Okay, Sean. Hi there, uh, Sean Boynton from Global News. Um, I'm just uh, wanting to follow up on a couple of colleagues who asked this um, about uh, contingency plans for uh, anybody who does not evacuate. Um, is there uh, plans for, uh, say, you know, uh, the military uh, helping with that, uh, potentially uh, door to door uh, visits? Uh, any details on uh, what might happen after uh, Friday at noon? Thank you. Okay, thanks for your question. Uh, Jennifer's team. Yes, um, as, as has been stated, we are encouraging everyone uh, in the area who has been required to evacuate to use the means in front uh, that have been provided to them to evacuate either by driving out or through uh, the flight options that are provided to them. Thank you. Thank you. I want to bring this back to Northern Media now um, and give you guys an opportunity to ask a couple more questions here. So Lucky Lant, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Ollie at Cabin Radio. Uh, what's the latest that you can give us on the hospital flight situation right now? We know there was a flight cancelled today for some patients. Uh, are we certain now that all remaining patients and all staff are going to be able to get out tomorrow? Go ahead, Jen. Um, for the details of that question, oh, sorry. For the details of that question, I'll pass it to Rick again as well. Uh, for the uh, the uh, flight for the uh, hospital uh, uh, was not cancelled. There was work to try to get a aircraft here for the hospital. Unfortunately, it won't be here until tomorrow because of the assets had to get ready for uh, the uh, plane to be up for evacuating those people. So there was no cancellation of flight. The flight will be on for tomorrow. Thank you. Ali, do you have a follow up? Uh, just, I suppose when we look at the flights, you know, we didn't get as many flights away today as we thought we were going to do. There's all sorts of variables that might lead to the same thing being the case tomorrow, Saturday. What is the contingency plan if we're not able to get the flights out that we need to get out? Go ahead. Uh, the contingency, sorry, Aggie. I think there's a delay in audio. Go ahead. You're good. <laughs> okay. Um, the contingency plan is that we will be um, running flights 24-7 until we have the population that is wanting to get out on flights are able to evacuate via those flights. Thank you. All right. Um, Eric at Inuvik Drum. Hey, yeah. Uh, just following up on the Hay River thing, I just want to make sure that we got this right here. It's because it says on the wildfire update as of 5 p.m. August 17th, an evacuation flight that is being organized out of Hay River. Anyone requiring evacuation should go to the airport immediately for further information. I just want to know what's uh, if there's any information on that flight we can include. Go ahead, Jennifer. Or did it happen or is there a flight? For that level of detail, I'm going to pass it to Ian Laguerre, please. I haven't seen that post, but I believe it might have been from yesterday. Uh, we have not received a request uh, for uh, air evacuation from Hay River today. Thank you. Eric, do you have a follow up? Uh, yeah, sure. So, this is again following up on the uh, people, what happens if people decide they want to stay. Uh, I spoke to the RCMP earlier, and my understanding is they're basically going to ask people uh, to leave, but they're not going to be physically moving people from their homes. Is there at any point in this uh, process where people will be basically forced to leave if the situation gets too dire for them to be here? Jennifer's team? We are unable to physically remove residents if their choice is not to remove. Okay, okay thank you. Um, all right, Lini at CBC North. Hey, thank you. Um, should the evacuation order for the city of Yellowknife have been declared earlier than last night? Okay. 
Minister Thompson, I'll throw that one to you. Yeah, so <clears throat> when we did the order, it was based on all the information that we had before the order, the evacuation or the state of emergency that was for the territories. We started seeing more issues are occurring. Um, the staff said that we needed to be prepared to uh, move forward if we could not get things uh, done because situations were changing so rapidly. So uh, the order was changed to uh, past the yesterday uh, and I, if the question was asked today, would I have changed it? No, we were, I was based on the information and the data that was given to me uh, by the departments and we moved forward based on that information. So the information was rapidly changing, um, fires were changing and we were seeing risks in a number of communities. Thank you. Thank you, Lini, do you have a follow-up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we know that the situation, the wildfire situation across Canada is happening um, in part because of climate change. Ken, perhaps this is a question for Minister Thompson. How has climate change affected the intensity of the fires that are threatening NW NWT communities right now? Go ahead, Minister. Yeah, thanks. And I probably will turn to Mike Westwick too on this. So what we're seeing is uh, we're having drought situations where we're seeing that the ground is actually taking really, really dry. We've seen that the weather, we're not getting the rain that we normally have. We didn't get the snow that we normally get. Um, we're seeing weather that uh, the snow that does happen, it would evaporate into the air and, to, and set into the ground. Um, so what we're seeing there, and then also the temperatures across the Northwest Territories uh, has been very, very warm. Um, and so that's where we're seeing uh, these challenges because of the climate change. Okay, thanks very much. All right, Radio Canada. Uh, could you uh, actually get Mike? Westwick, to add to if there was anything that he might have had. Thank you. Oh, sorry about that. Mike Westwick, do you have anything to add? Mike, you there? His sound is not working. It's off and on. Sorry. Oh. All right. All right. So we'll move along then to Radio Canada. Do you have any questions? Oui, j'aimerais entendre la mairesse Alti ou encore la ministre Wazwanek en français qu'on n'a pas entendu depuis longtemps sur l'importance, vous pensez, que votre message pour euh, encourager les résidents à quitter maintenant. Pourquoi est-ce que c'est important de partir maintenant? I see Minister Wazwanek jumped in here. I don't speak French, but Minister, do you want to take that one? Ah bien, merci. J'aimerais le diriger aussi à la meilleure, mais, mais en, juste pour commencer, en, en, de la part du gouvernement des territoires du Nord-Ouest, c'est vraiment important parce que les efforts ne euh, vont pas être un succès s'il y a trop de personnes encore ici, si les personnes sur, sur la ligne doivent se, se, doivent se penser à qui est dans les maisons, c est, c est, où est les personnes. C'est vraiment important que les, les gens qui font le travail de battre cette feu peuvent concentrer seulement sur la feu et non, non à les personnes qui sont encore dans la ville. Alors, c'est vraiment, vraiment là qu'on sait que c'est vraiment important qu'on utilise cette opportunité maintenant pour partir de la ville. Merci. Thanks, Minister. Claudia, do you have a follow-up? Uh, si la mairesse veut répondre, ce serait gentil en français. Merci. Oui, pas de, pas de problème. Oui, um, comme le ministre vient de dire, uh, c'est important pour beaucoup de différentes raisons, mais uh, premièrement, le, la rue c'est quand même ouverte, donc uh, c'est important, c'est uh, la meilleure façon de, de quitter la ville. Um, ça prend plus de temps avec les avions, donc on encourage les gens de partir maintenant. Um, le feu approche et c'est aussi, c'est pas seulement le feu, mais le fumé dans les prochains quelques jours va être très épais. Et si on doit faire un um, brûle qui est contrôlé, ça va être encore plus pire. Donc, uh, la qualité de l'air, um, ça c'est une raison, mais comme la ministre vient de dire, c'est important aussi pour que 
nous pouvons juste concentrer sur notre effort de, de battre le feu um, et que les gens sont hors et dans un uh, endroit sûr. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Mayor. All right, um, Lini, can you repeat your question for Mike Westwick? It looks like he's back on the call. Mike, yeah, to confirm, you, are you back? Sorry, Lini. Uh, Mike, are you back on the call? Mike, are you there? I'm working on it here. I had to switch to mobile. <laughs> Good, your audio works now. Yeah. All right, Lini, can you ask your question? Now I've got a dog barking in the background. <laughs> uh, this is the reality of being holed up in a room with my partner and a reactive dog while we are in Fort Simpson. Anyway, um, my question, Mike, was we know that uh, the wildfire situation unfolding across Canada is in part the result of, of climate change. Can you tell us how climate change is affecting the intensity of the fires that uh, are threatening NWT communities? Yeah, when you have when you have dry ground to start the season like we did with almost no snow, uh, that like, you know, 20 to 30 percent of the snow that we would expect heading into the spring. And uh, when you continue to see a lack of precipitation, you know, there's a problem that's going to cause hotter, more intense fires that are much more difficult to put out. Much of the Northwest Territories are, is in a drought situation uh, and it is uh, it is causing fires that are larger and more difficult to put out. Um, that, along with the buildup of fuel in our forests. Uh, our build-up index, uh, you know, preaching, approaching 150 to 200 uh, for, for context, 90 is extreme. Uh, all of that's le led to fires like these that we're fighting around Yellowknife uh, that have been burning for well over a month, that we've been fighting hard for well over a month uh, from the very start, uh, and that just keep finding ways through. This is the situation that we're facing right now. It's extraordinarily challenging. Uh, but our team is doing absolutely everything on the ground to push back against these fires. Thanks, Mike. Um, I actually just realized that I missed a question uh, that was written in the chat here from Paige Parsons. So this one's going to go to Jeffrey at the Department of Infrastructure. Um, so he's the acting ADM for regional operations. So the question here is, how is the fuel supply holding up at gas stations for people on the road right now or those who haven't evacuated yet? Has there been much demand for the fuel trucks? Jeffrey, go ahead. Thank you for the question. Yeah, there definitely has been uh, demand for fuel. We have a, a southbound traffic count from yesterday. I don't have today's count, but there were 1,419 vehicles. So 1,419 vehicles yesterday crossed over the uh, Dacho Bridge. So we have uh, fuel all along the highway. Uh, we have two fuel tankers for portable uh, fuel between Yellowknife and Betchico. The gas station at Port Providence is uh, is also uh, a big stop and we have fuel tanker on site with additional supply for them. We have another uh, tanker showing up tomorrow. So there's no, con no concerns for any fuel along there. And I also wanna pass along that the government of Alberta, they're also prepared uh, for the additional traffic and they've set up a uh, portable fuel stop at Steen River to accommodate the, ex the additional traffic that's coming their way as well. So no concerns for fuel along the highways for the uh, traveling travelers. Thanks very Thank much, you. Jeffrey. Thank you. Uh, so we have time for one last question. The first person to raise their hand, I'll, I'll throw to you. All right, Carrie Tate. Hi, thanks for taking the last question. I'm wondering, I'm a little confused on the hospital. I understand there was a plan to evacuate. Um, is there a plan to get all of the patients out of the hospital or is it just for those who are in the most critical condition? Sure, Jennifer, I'm gonna throw this to you. Um, I'm not sure if we should, oh, Kim Kimberly, I see that you brought yourself in here. Do you wanna speak to this? Yeah, and doc, I can ask Dr. Kraft to augment perhaps, um, but just, yeah, the, the plan is actually to move all of our inpatients out of the hospital. So that would mean that anybody who's admitted in any area of the hospital would be transferred out. Okay, thank you. 
Alrighty, so I am going to wrap this up now uh, because it's almost eight o'clock. Thank you very much to our panel and to media for your questions. And media, if you do have further questions, please reach out to the appropriate department. And if you have questions for ministers or the premier, please reach out to press secretary at pressecretary at gov.nt. Ca, realizing um, that there are, you know, delays in responses because of everything that's happening right now. Thank you very much and take care.